Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to another week of virtual story time brought to you by the Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force and the Morningside Primary and Infant School. This week, we have a very, very interesting story for you. But before we begin, let us have our little boys and girls introduce themselves and we'll begin with Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker, can you unmute yourself yourself and introduce yourself for us? Raheem? Yes, miss. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Baker. I'm nine years old. I go to Golden Spring Primary School and I live in St. Andrew. All right, thank you. Sarah, it's over to you. Unmute yourself and tell our viewers who you are. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is. Sarah McDonald, I am 11 years old. I attend Great Start Academy and uh, I live in St. Elizabeth, Littich District. Thank you, Sarah. Let's go over to you now, Everton. Unmute yourself and tell us who you are. My name is Everton Wilson. I am 12 years old. Um, I'm going to Clarendon College. I live in the parish of St. Catherine. Ah, I guess you just passed your PEP exam. Yes, yes. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you. Miss Marshall, over to you. Hello, my name is Galen Marshall. I am 11 years of age. I attend the Duncan's Primary School. Thank you. And Mr. Reed, over to you. Hello, my name is Jovain Reed. I'm 11 years old. I attend Erwin Primary and I live in the parish of Montego Bay. Thank you. So, Michaela, mm -hmm. Samuel, your turn. Hello, I am Shayla Samuels. I am from Jesper Paul Primary and I am currently in the parish of Kingston. All right. Thank you very, very much. Now, my name is Nahili Lynch and I'll be your host this evening. This evening we have with us our reader. You can call her Auntie Michelle. Auntie Michelle is a teacher and she is passionate about what she does. She will be at school from 6.30 in the mornings straight on till six in the evening. And with her this evening, we also have her daughter, Sydney Marie. They will be reading for us this evening a story. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. And Michelle, with the Marie, over to you. Hello and good night, everyone. My name is Sydney Marie Jones, and I am 11 years old, and I am a past student of El Instituto de Mandevia. I will be attending Bishop Gibson High School in September, and I live in St. Elizabeth. Okay, thank you, Sydney Marie. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you so much. I was introduced as Auntie Michelle, and it is my privilege to be on tonight and to be your reader. As a matter of fact, Sydney Marie and I will be reading together 
and we are going to be reading you a story and then we will have our discussion. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And afterwards, please be a part of our vibrant discussion that we're going to have. Thank you. Okay, as was mentioned, the story comes to us tonight from the famous author Enid Blyton, and the book is entitled um, Giants Around the Corner, but I'll be reading a short story from this compilation of stories. So please listen as I read. They said he was too small. That's the title of this short story. Clear off, yelled Dick to Joe. I've told you before, you're too small to play football with us. I'm only a year younger than you, yelled back Joe. And I'm a jolly good player too. You're not. You're too small to make a good footballer, shouted Dick. You're a shrimp, clear off. A boy near Joe gave him a shove. Go on, do what Dick says, he's the captain. We can't have tiddlers like you playing with us. I can't help being small, said Joe. I grow, won't I? Give me a chance. I've a big uncle who was a famous footballer and I am going to be like him. Give me a chance. But all he got was another shove, which sent him flying to the ground. Joe got up and walked off crossly, wishing and wishing that he was as tall as the others. He went home. His mother was surprised to see him. I thought you were playing football, Joe, she said. Aren't the boys playing today? Yes, but they told me to clear off, said Joe. I am too small. Can't I do anything to make myself grow, mom? I'm a fast runner and a good kicker. And I just don't care how often I get tripped up. Cheer up, Joe, said his mother. I have some news for you. Uncle Jim is visiting Granny today. You know what a great footballer he was until he hurt his back. You go and talk to him about football. He'll tell you plenty of good tales. Joe sped off, thrilled. Uncle Jim had been such a wonderful footballer. It would be marvelous to see him again and hear his tales. He might give Joe a few tips too on playing football. Uncle Jim was at Granny's. Granny was his mother and she was delighted to see him. She gave Joe a great welcome too. Ah, my two footballers, she said. Now, Jim, you just talk to Joe while I get the lunch. Why aren't you out playing football this lovely Saturday morning? Asked Uncle Jim. I wouldn't have wasted a fine day like this when I was your age if I could have been out on the football ground. I feel like that too, said Joe but the boys won't let me join their team. They say I'm a shrimp and a tiddler and much, much too small. All the same, I am nearly as old as some of them. Uncle Jim saw that Joe was very miserable, although he tried to smile. Never mind, we'll find one of my old footballs up in Granny's attic and have a game to ourselves, he said. So up he went and rummaged about and soon came down again with a marvelous football. He made it ready for play 
and Joe looked on excited. What is all this writing on the ball, uncle? He asked, running his finger over some faded words. Ah, oh, those are the signatures of many famous footballers. When I had to retire because of my back, they signed their names on it. I think perhaps I'll give it to you, Joe. I shall never use it in a game again. Joe could hardly believe his ears. What? Have this magnificent football with the autographs of famous footballers all over it? Why, goodness me, what would the boys say? Come on, said Uncle Jim. We'll have a game and I'll give you a few hints. We'll have fun. They did have fun. And when Joe went home at lunchtime, his face shone like the sun. He had a wonderful morning and now he owned a marvelous football. He would take it out to the field that very afternoon and kick it around. So he went out that sunny afternoon and soon kicking it round the field, Tom came up to him. That's a fine football. Where did you get it? It belonged to my Uncle Jim, the one who was a footballer, said Joe. And look, it has autographs of all the famous players written on it. It's really too valuable to play with, but I simply must have a kick around. Tom went to find Dick, the captain. I say, he said, that shrimp, Joe, has a simple, magnificent football. Look at it. It's much better than our old thing. It's got famous footballers' names signed all over it. Go and ask him to come and join in our game and see if he let us play with his football, said Dick at once. So off went Tom back to Joe. Dick says you can play with us this afternoon and bring that ball along with you, he said. No, thanks, said Joe. I'm not big enough to play with you. You've said so dozens of times. I'll just kick it around by myself. Soon all the boys were watching Joe as he kicked the wonderful football about. Come on, Joe, yelled John. Come and play. Let's have a kick at that ball. I'm too small to play with you, said Joe. You keep saying so. You only want me in because I got this ball. And let me tell you this. My Uncle Jim played football with me this morning and he gave me some good hints. I bet we'll win our next match if I told them to you. You come on and play, Joe, said Dick. We do want your ball. It's true. But if you play well, we'll want you too. Come on, we're a boy short. Joe grinned. He had meant to play all the time. He kicked the ball to Dick. All right, he said, I'll make a bargain with you. If I play well, you let me into the team with my ball. But if I turn a fib and I play badly, well, kick me out. But I'll still lend you my ball. How's that? You're a good little one, said Dick, and gave him a slap on the back. Right, it's a bargain. Well, you should have seen Joe that afternoon. He ran like a hare. He shot two goals. He took the ball from the other side time after time. He tried out all the tricks his uncle had shown him. He fell heavily at least six times, but he was up and running again at once. And how marvelous that ball was compared with the old one the boys had played for weeks. The game was over at last. The boys clustered around Joe, panting. Dick gave him such a slap on the back that the small boy almost fell over. You win, Joe. You're in the team. You may be a tiddler, but my word, you're a good tiddler. We can do with someone we can do with someone good like you. You're sure I'm not too small for you? 
said Joe slyly. We're sure. So, so long as you are sure we're not too big for you, said Dick. You go along and tell your uncle. We like his ball and we like his nephew even better. Well, wasn't that good? Joe's grown up now and he's a wonderful footballer. You've read his name in the paper many a time. Okay. That is the end of our story. Wow, excellent reading, wonderful message. Now, I hope you are all listening because it's now time for discussion. So Auntie Michelle, I want you to ask your first question for discussion. Okay, boys and girls, I know you are listening attentively. Did you like the story? Well, I know you would have loved this story, but my first question is, what is the moral of the story? Raise your hands if you want to answer. What is the moral? What have you learned from this story? Julian, you want to go ahead? Yes, miss. The moral yes. of the story. The moral of the story is that we must not judge people by their um height. Very good. All right. Anybody else before we say anything else? Everton. What or oh, what was moral? of the story. That no matter how big or how small a, chat, a person is, you should never be mean to them. Okay. Sarah, thank you, Everton. Good. You're Sarah? Welcome. Yes. What do you think? Well, I think because uh, um, we should never say things to people that you think it's wrong, but when they do it, correctly you'll think they're right about all right your reception wasn't so good but i i got the essence of what you're saying that we should be careful how we treat others when we think they get something wrong and then when they get it right we treat them differently mr reed yes miss what do you think the moral of the story was? You shouldn't judge anyone, anybody because of their height. They shouldn't judge anyone. All right. Thank you. Very good. Shayla. You should not criticize people just because of their height or the way they look. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Baker? You should not say, I don't want to play with you. And when they come with something you want, you just bring them in. Yeah, they're very important. Sydney, what do you think? I can actually attest to this story in that I am quite tiny and sometimes people tend to ridicule me by saying you're too tiny to go to high school. But being small does not deter the greatness that lies within you. You can do or become anything you would like to be. All right, thank you. Very good. Um, so, any of you have um, 
experienced anything like that where you are judged wrongfully? No, miss. Oh, okay. Very good. So only only Sydney alone oh, yes. can attest to that. <laughs> now, what message would you tell somebody who thinks they're too short? or people or others tell that they're too short? What would you tell them based on what you learned from this story? What, what message would you give to them? No matter how tall or short you are, you can do anything you put your mind to it. When you put your mind to it. Great. All right, very good. Anybody else? Just unmute and say, what would you tell somebody? No matter how, how small or big you are, you should not let anybody put you down. You should always come back up and show them strength and never let them bring you down. Very, very good. Wow. Mrs. Jones, yes. I'm sure may you have ask, more questions. Yes, may I ask this question? Because I know boys and girls that from time to time, I know that you have been confronted with situations and challenges Probably it's not your size, probably it's the way that you look, probably, probably it's different challenges. But um, I would like to ask, how do you deal with situations in which sometimes you're ridiculed? How maybe because of your stature, as Sidney Marie says, or because of other circumstances? Maybe at school or elsewhere from time to time, maybe you, you have been um, experiencing those kind of challenges. How do you, how would you encourage somebody who has been experiencing or who has experienced these kind of challenges? Anybody, how would you deal with that? How would you encourage them to tackle such situations? Anybody? Just unmute and go ahead. We are all special. Anybody say you're not special? of the way you look. Yes. yes. Are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. What? That's so true. Yes, that's true. Excellent. Anybody else? We are not perfect, but we were made by the one who is perfect and we will always be perfect to him. I Very love good. that. I love that. Yes, indeed. That is good. Can you repeat that, Shayla? Can you please repeat that, Shayla? We are not perfect, but we were made by the one who is perfect, and we are perfect to him. Very good. Excellent. Very good. Excellent point. Anybody else want to say something? All right, Mrs. Jones, your next question. Now, in the story that I've just read, I am sure that you have a favorite character from the story. Now, who was your favorite character in the story? And you're going to tell me why that person was your favorite character. Who was your favorite character from the story? And you're going to tell me why. Why is that person your favorite character? Anybody? Joe was my favorite character. Okay. Why was he your favorite character? Because um, as, as he got the, foot, the football with the autograph from his Uncle Jim, everyone wanted to play with him, even though they said that he was too small. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I would like, like to hear... Yes, go ahead. My favorite character is Joe's uncle because when everyone doubted Joe, his uncle gave him courage. Very good. Very, very, good. Very, good. very good. Yes. Go ahead. Anybody I would else? like to hear from all of you students. I would like to hear. All right. Let's. Taylor, who was your favorite character? 
My favorite character was Joe's uncle because when everyone thought Joe was too small, his uncle always his uncle told him that he's never too small to do anything. Great. Mr. Reed. Yes, Miss. What was your Joe. favorite character? And why? Because even though he was short, he was good at playing football. Okay, um, Sarah. I'll say Joe is because um, he has a, a uncle that plays football. So he will always encourage him to do things when uh, the other is telling him he's too tiny and so all right now now the, i think i think one of the message that that came out in this is that we should always practice kindness because in the beginning, they were so mean to Joe. And then afterwards, after he, they saw him, with the ball, they, they started treating him better. And so, what do you think? How when you go to school, how do you show kindness? Can you tell us about a situation or a circumstance in which you showed kindness to someone? Mary, how do you show kindness at school? At school. Like at Break time, for example, when I have food and someone doesn't have food, or like all persons who don't have food in the class, we would make a corner and every break time we would equally share the snacks for who doesn't have food. You're muted. That's very good. Now, or is there a time that somebody showed you kindness that you remember? Has somebody done something for you, something kind that you remember that made a difference in your life? Maybe encouraged you, shared something with you that you want to share? Anybody want to share? Is there a time when somebody has ever shown you kindness and you want to share it? Miss Marshall, has anybody ever if you give us a situation in at school? I want it to be practical that we can relate. You have shown kindness to someone or somebody went out of their way to show you kindness. Yes, Miss. Um, I have showed someone kindness. The way I show someone kindness, one of my best friends. They, they lost their sharpener and uh, it was during an um, assessment. So um, she was asking everybody else, but everybody else was being mean to her. So I, I called her over to my desk and I, lent, I told her that she could take my sharpener. That's, that's nice. But after that's that, but after that, he, um, people were saying, why, don't, why didn't you be mean to her? So I said to them, everybody should be kind and not mean. Very good. That's the message. If we can't be anything else, we must practice to be kind. Mm -hmm. If we want to change the world, a matter of fact, we need to practice to be kind. And, and also too, might I add, we should not be kind to others based on ulterior motives. Because in the story, 
at first, the students were, they were very mean to Joe, but because he had a beautiful ball and they wanted the ball, they started to be, they started being kind to him. So when we're going to be kind, kindness comes from within. So we should not be kind and we should not um, have ulterior motives when, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share my sharpener because he is going to have pizza for lunch or she's going to have pizza and I want some of her pizza. So it must, kindness must be genuine. Always bear that in mind, boys and girls. It must be genuine. Wow. This has been a really good discussion. I am so proud of you all. Man, you really, you all did an excellent job. So as you go about your daily lives, those of us watching on Facebook and those of us here, let us practice kindness. Let us believe in ourselves also, no matter what anybody else says about you. Always know that greatness lies within you and believe in yourself. And we must never judge a book by its cover. Because Joe was short, they did not give him the opportunity to play. And at the same time, he had the skills to play. So we should not judge others. So as we leave here, let us practice kindness. Let us believe in ourselves and let us not judge others, but give them the opportunity to shine. Mrs. Jones, your final words before we go. Okay, boys and girls, I just want to say, I hope that this story has motivated you and it has empowered you in some aspects of your life. And I just want to encourage you. I just want to reiterate what Mrs. Ms. Lynch said. It's not about your stature. Or it's not about how you look. It's about what is deep within you greatness lies within you and you should never allow anyone else to stifle your greatness you're born with a purpose and you need to fulfill your purpose you need to be bold and be brave and to be confident and you need to believe in yourself and you need to tell yourself that yes i'm going to face obstacles and challenges and so on but i know what my objectives are and i know what i'm about and i can do all things through Christ, who's going to give me the strength. Shayla had said something. I think she said we're not perfect. I would like her to close out with that as we go. Shayla, remember what you said about not being perfect? Because I think that is so important. That is so potent that all of us can live with that, that even though we're not perfect. Can you repeat that for all of us? Even though we are not perfect, we were made by the one who is perfect and we are perfect to him. Thank you. So boys and girls, wave goodbye to everybody. Bye. So everyone, thanks for joining us and we'll see you same place, same time next week for another week of virtual story time. Thank you.